So it's finally the month of July, and even though we didn't hit $100 last month in June for our dividend income, we still made tons of leaps and bounds in our dividend portfolio. Not only did we increase our annual dividend income from May to June over 10%, but we're also still putting substantial amounts of money into specific positions in this portfolio, which I'm strategically trying to get not only for dividend income, but also to do the wheel strategy on, on specific dividend stocks and non-dividend stocks. Even though we're still not getting $100 a month in dividends, it still feels good to add substantial amounts of money to these dividend stocks for my future growth of my portfolio. Well, today we're gonna to take a look at exactly what's going on with my Robinhood portfolio. We're gonna see how it performed over the past month. Then we're also gonna compare it to the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Dow Jones Industrial. Where are my charts? Then we're gonna take a look at exactly what I bought for the month of June and how much money I added to this portfolio. Then last but not least, we're gonna take a look at my biggest loser and my biggest gainer over the past month in my dividend portfolio. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because we're getting into it right now. So taking a look at the Robinhood portfolio, we can see that it is currently sitting at $31,283.44. And over the past month, I'm up 3.7% or a little over $1,100. That means that year to date, we're up 15.88%, which is $4,200. And over the past year, we're only up 2.94%, which is a little under $1,000. Now, if we compare what I did over the past month compared to the S&P 500, we can see that S&P 500 did 5.43%, compared to the NASDAQ, it did 5.24%, and then the Dow Jones is 4.07%, meaning that I underperformed all three major indices with this portfolio, but that's okay. Last month, I outperformed two of them, this month, I'm underperforming all three. It's definitely a back and forth when it comes to a hand-picked portfolio compared to a major ETF or mutual fund. And don't forget, a lot of times, dividend stocks or defensive stocks, right? They don't perform as well as certain stocks like tech stocks or meme stocks. That's why a lot of people get into a lot of these dividend stocks because it's a solid company, pays you a dividend, and it's relatively safe. I'll take a look at my June purchases. We can see that I bought into five different companies, two of them being funds, three of them being companies. So, so the first one being Google, I bought 3.17 shares, and that's about $393.23, and that brought my total up to 35 and a half shares. Next we have VTI, I bought 18% of a share of this ETF, that's around $37.93, and that brought my total up to 9.68 shares. SCHD, another great fund that I not only own in this portfolio, but I also own in my Roth IRA. I bought 37% of an entire share, which is around $27, and that bumped me up to 1.2 total shares. Next, we have Intel Corporation. I bought 15 shares, which is around $527, and that brought me up to a total of 15 shares. Next, we have Old Realty Income. I bought 13.37 shares, and that's $813. That brought me up to 50, over 50 shares. And that brought me out to a total of $1,798.56, guys. That is less than my last month and the month before that. Because if you remember, I put in a little over $2,000 for the month of May and the month of April, but that's okay. We're still above $1,500, close to $1,800 basically, which is very, very good for me to be able to put that much amount of money in a portfolio. Again, I don't know how sustainable that is, but we're going to do that until we can't anymore. So now that I own 50 shares of overrealty income, I'm no longer adding money into that, except for the dividends that get reinvested back into it. I'm now focusing on Intel Corporation. I'd like to get 100 shares of that company, and I will do a deep dive valuation on the company and why I started buying into it again over the past month and a half. So with all of these purchases, this $1,700, almost $1,800, that brought me up to a total of $1,033 for my annual income for the month of month of July. So from May to June, I increased 10.35% my annual income. That's around $67. So I gained 67 bucks from May to June, and that's also exactly what I have right now in July. Hopefully I could hit $1,100 in annual income this month, but 
who knows? I don't know, again, if I'll be able to keep adding $2,000 a month into this portfolio. So the very last thing we're gonna take a look at is my biggest winners and my biggest losers in my Robinhood portfolio, my dividend portfolio. Now, we're gonna see a trend with this here, right? Not only is my biggest loser a non-dividend paying stock, which is charge point, I'm down 7.31%. As you can see, I am down a total of 40.6%, which is pretty, pretty big, but I'm running covered calls on this. So I'm slowly gaining money back and holding this for the long term. And this represents 2.8% of my portfolio. And then our biggest winner is none other than Tesla. Tesla shot up around 30% over the past month, and that brought me up to 46% gain, about $1,300. And this is 13.4% of my entire portfolio. As you can see, my average cost is $170, and Tesla right now is $261.90. So, not only is my biggest gainer a non-dividend payer, but so is my biggest loser. You might say, why are you talking about these? Why do you have these in a portfolio that's supposed to be a dividend portfolio? Well, it's because it's more of an income-based portfolio heavily invested in dividends, but also have a few stocks like Tesla, Google, and ChargePoint where I am trying to get 100 shares of these to run the wheel strategy on. So I can then buy more dividend stocks so then I can get 100 shares of them so I can then not only gain the dividends, but run the wheel strategy on and then buy more and then, you know, basically make my money work for me to where I can not, don't have to put as much money into the month in this portfolio from my out-of-pocket funds. But there you have it. I underperformed all three major indices uh, with my Robinhood portfolio. And I also put about $1,800 into the dividend portfolio this month, which brought me up to $1,033 or 10% gain in annual income. And my biggest loser being ChargePoint, biggest gainer being Tesla, both non-dividend stocks. If you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments below how much money do you put into your accounts each month? Are you able to put over $1,000 in, $2,000 a month, or are you still just starting out and starting slow? Guys, when I started out, I wasn't putting much money in a month, but now I'm able to put much, much more money in. The more financially stable I get, the more I can put in. So yeah, smash that thumbs up button and hit that little red subscribe button if you're still watching this video and haven't done so yet. If you want to continue your journey with me, go ahead and click one of the screens on the video. I'm going to get out of here. Peace, love, and prosperity.